invoking, conjuring, traveling between worlds, creating bonds and bindings, searching for sympathy between things, people, emotions and feelings. Curses, very much like us, have a life of their own. Some will last just a few moments, some others longer than just a few moments, and some very powerful ones will last lifetimes. Up here, everything looks so small. It's very quiet. Waves of static ripple across a sea of humming ink. The sun glistens like a wound on the throat of a thousand rivers, splitting and connecting our many-tongued home. Somewhere, down there, a musk melon cracks open like a ripened sun, its flesh white as the scooped open stars. Who am I to say that none of this matters? In a hush large enough to swallow us whole. All I know is that once I was hungry and there were hands that fed me. I was winter and the bark of my spine burst into blossom. I was born, then burnt. Inhale and exhale. And all of the beautiful nothing in between. Being a woman uh, living her craft in the northern region of Norway had me understand this rather soon. Rather soon indeed, I understood me and my people uh, come from the other side. Utgard, from the wild, foreign and unsafe landscape that lies outside the Vikings' sphere. This was the place uh, where the Norse uh, outlaws were sent when they were exiled from family and society, a place where they could experience death and the power of it. A land and people safely placed in the chaos sphere outside or on the border of the Norse world order. It's a A land and people that could um, train wolves, but how? In the alienation of this liminal sphere, Utgar, the untamed chaos sphere, utterances and thoughts gain power as they are supported by the resonance of an empty and barren land. Through increased distance from the order sphere, the relationship with nature becomes more ambivalent. In a land where the relationship with nature was um, characterized by participation and interaction and not uh, based on exploitation and a desire for control, magic, sorcery and all its features have become very powerful as the land has still its full force and voice. The fancy it off attitude to the occasionally penetrated to obtain resources has made the land and the people inhabiting that type of land very weak and very receptive to utterances and thoughts coming from more highly vibrational places. Reality is that the more integrated we get, the more powerful our thoughts and utterances become. You see, utterances and thoughts are the 
flesh, blood and bone of a curse and they can be tremendously mighty forces and their force can rot off the bones of whoever and whatever withering them up by the fire of Helene and have them fall down in ashes to a ground that will be their forever pillow when you do it right. What is a curse? Everything is energy, at least if we go into microscopic details, electrons, protons, atoms, quarks, and so on. Everything is really just oscillations, frequencies. And if we look at light, it is made of photons. A photon is both a particle and a wave, a swerve, a frequency, in the same way that we can feel heat from a stone for a while after the sun has shone on it. Other energies can also create what I would call residual energy that radiates out and disappears over time. But in any case, a powerful charging energy is needed to make an energy last in an object. A curse is a powerful charging energy, which I prefer to call reverberatory energy, given meaning by some presence, be it human, spiritual, animal, or the land itself. A curse is an extension of the wildness of nature, therefore its force is the perfect mixture of chaos and rage. A curse cannot be born in a murmuring, gentle utterances because its energy is not sensible, it is wild. A curse needs two hands, your hands and the unseen hand of nature, to rise volcanic to the surface. Curses increase the frequency and the waves depending on the strength they can vibrate in objects, people, land, just when they find resonance, receptiveness. Very much like electric circuits, curses, hexes, the evil eye, black magic at large have signatures. They have a very distinctive frequency within their circuits. Each and every component in an electric circuit, so each and every component of a curse has indeed a frequency that makes the whole thing work together. If you learn the signatures, if you learn to hear the frequency by analyzing the physical and energy patterns of the affected area, person, animal, plot of land, then technically you wouldn't really need to know who cast that curse in the first place, as the curse can be dismantled based indeed on this knowledge. When you learn the signature and the frequency patterns of a curse, you can learn the name of that curse, where sticks and bones, the land, will be the only ones able to break your bones and rot your flesh, but names, utterances, thoughts, they will never harm you again. evade or neutralize a curse. This is a technique that has not failed me or any of my clients. You need to create a jar. Draw the rune a vase on the jar with whatever body fluid as she is the rune which by nature acts as a sorcery facilitator. 
The shape of the rune resembles two people holding hands, which is exactly the magical act you are perpetrating, both in curses and removal of curses. Two are the hands at work, your hand and the unseen hand of the land. Put in a jar some of your spit or whatever body fluid, I prefer a urine or a drop of menstrual blood, along with right foot, toenail, iron nails, a piece of animal bone found in nature. I prefer reindeer ribs or bits of antlers and soil from a crossroads. Fill the jar with water, get a straw and blow in the jar until the water starts growing cloudy. Once done this, pour the content into the ground or a vase with the soil if you are at home. Rinse the jar clean and fill it again with water. Blow into the water again, pour it out again. This can be done also with the same procedure, blowing in the jar towards areas affected by curses such as body parts or people. With this act, we are repeatedly creating a strong pattern and building up a frequency that will respond to the initial curse frequency and like the spare maidens at the Valkyries with no mercy, we will fight back. While you blow in the jar, make sure to use an obsidian mirror or simply a mirror to further interdict and confuse the link that the curse was intended to establish. The last act is to induce laughter in yourself. In this way, we are calling in the Lord of Chaos, Luke. <laughs> We fight chaos by invoking chaos. When we laugh heavily, changes occur. As laughter is evoked, chaos in a series of rhythmic, vocalized, expiratory and involuntary actions where we use the harmonic structure of laughter to fill up our mouth with shouts of wildness that will crash down the altars of sorrow, assigned to abort our life. You see, evil arrows uh, will always fly, day and night, uh, but we don't have to incubate them. We can learn uh, to confuse them, uh, chase them out and nullify them. We can still fight uh, for light uh, by fighting with darkness, winter, stars, uh, ashes and ice to overwhelm darkness. Uh, yeah.